Hi everyone. Every kid starts out as a natural born scientist. And then we beat it out of them. <laughs> a few trickle through the system with their wonder and enthusiasm for science intact. The wonderful Carl Sagan. Yes. I should have tried to do his voice there. Yes. What a wonderful ooman. <laughs> so this is a this is a, a uh, chemistry experiment VR, I think it's called, with the DK2. So yeah, if you're into chemistry, or if you're just into learning, let's wash our hands first. On our feet. So yeah, look at this beautiful little room. So we've got uh, all sorts of goodies. I feel like doing a Skyrim run. <laughs> Oh, we got a stool. I think we can move objects. Yes, we look about. So put up a chaise lounge and let's let's somebody's already knocked that one over. And let's have a little look. Yes, we'll not do the experiments because it might take a little too long because there's quite a lot in this. Here's your. Uh, the atomic properties of the elements, the periodic table, which is out of date, I suppose, 2010. They added a few new ones. With the half-life as thick as a moth's, a, a, a gnat's wing. So, <laughs> let's have a little look. Exercise. pH equals the pKa plus the logarithm of the deprotonated 4 divided by the protonated form of the compound. Because the pH of the acetic acid is 4.7, equal to its pKa, we know the division between the deprotonated and protonated forms must equal to 1. Therefore, we know the logarithm must equal to 0, which is the logarithm of 1. Because we As I say, we'll not do the experiment because it does, it's a little bit time consuming. And if you do want to try this, I'm sure you'll want to do it on your own. I'm sure you want to know what a buffer solution is. A buffer is. solution. More precisely, pH buffer or hydrogen ion buffer. Is an aqueous solution consisting of a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base, or vice versa. Its pH changes very little when a small or moderate amount of strong acid or base is added to it and thus it is used to prevent changes in the pH of a solution. Buffer solutions are used as a means of beautiful so there you go you can learn about buffer solutions you can do the experiment I don't know where that went there's experiments you can do <laughs> I'm just walking away from the chairs and, uh, do the poltergeist film <laughs> so yes what is this I hear you shout this is an acetic acid source solution I think we need that for the experiment but yes, very good. And we need this. Let's have a look. pH equals the pKa plus the logarithm of the deprotonated 4 divided by the protonated form of the compound. Because the pH of the acetic acid is 4.7, equal to its pKa, we know the division between the deprotonated and protonated forms must equal to 1. Therefore, we know the logarithm must equal to 0, which is the logarithm of 1. Because we need zero point. So it's a shame not to show you at all, but as I say, the video would be about 20, 30 minutes long. <laughs> and we all haven't got that ex time to spare. Sure, we don't. Look how beautiful this is. So this is just to show you as a concept. Uh, explosives, flammable liquids, it, all easy red. Beautiful. Beautifully done. Skin irritation and acute toxicity. Very cute indeed. We got a fire extinguisher. Uh oh. <laughs> and we have um, liquid oxygen. Oh my goodness, I can take some liquid oxygen. I don't know where to take it to. We'll take it over here. <laughs> And here we have, um, uh, is it pH? Yes, it is. In chemistry, 
pH is the negative logarithm of the activity of the hydrogen ion in an aqueous solution. Solutions with a pH less than 7 are said to be acidic and solutions with a pH greater than 7 are basic or alkaline. Pure water has a pH of 7. The pH scale is traceable to a set of standard solutions whose pH is established by international agreement. There you go, it's absolutely one. It's chock full of wonderful things. Isn't it, Carl? Hey, Carl. Being cheeky. So yes, uh, there's a couple more surprises. Don't go away yet. Don't, don't you dare. And here's an Oculus Rift. Uh-oh. No, it's, it's not really. <laughs> right, get that out of the way. So yes, what a beautiful little chemistry lab. And uh, we've got credits in here. Don't worry, I'm going to gonna end with a tune. <laughs> oh no! This is a VR experience by Carles Guirez Vasquez, student at the Fac Faculty of Biology in the University of Seville in Spain. So there you go. Charlie wants to check him out. If you can, if you've got the time and the inclination. Beautiful. There's chemistry lab number five. I hope he does a physics one. We've got a, uh, ooh, we've got a biology lab, work in progress. So yes, before this crazy tune starts, which I'm going to la leave you with, <laughs> I'm going to just say thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Who says VR can't be exciting? Not David Attenborough. One species turn into another. How is it that we find ourselves surrounded by such complexity, such elegance? The genes of you and me, the genes of you and me, we're all made of DNA. We're all made of the same chemical DNA. The fittest survive, and that was the key. Natural selection. That was the key. We are surrounded by endless forms, most beautiful, most wonderful. Evolution, the greatest show on earth. There is grandeur in this view of life. Most beautiful, most wonderful. Evolution, the greatest show on earth. David Albert thinks you're wonderful, and so do I. See you later. Life can be thought of as a many branch tree. The five kingdoms of life were established early on. Bacteria, protists, amoeba-like creatures, fungi, plants, and animals. We find ourselves perched on one tiny twig. In the midst of a blossoming tree of life. In the midst of a blossoming tree of life, only the fittest survive.